So do you think this thing is going to run? Well, let's find out together. So I've changed the oil. I actually had to pump the oil out of this thing. I changed both diesel filters and did a whole bunch of other things to it. So I'll show you around the generator first and then we'll press the switch and see if it starts. So hopefully it will. As you can see, the thing's pretty much ready to go. I changed the oil filter. It had the original white Kubota filter on it. And I never really liked the way they stood these things up like this because the filter empties out over time. And uh, just to give you an example here, I'll just grab this other filter. It's right on the bench. This is the filter that was on it. See that? It's not a speck of oil in it. Right, because it all runs back down into the crankcase. You know, I could stand here for a day and nothing will come out of this thing. This thing is bone dry. Right, so, so anyways, that got replaced with this Baldwin. So that's on there now. I had to pump the oil out of it. So, pardon the movement of the camera here. So I had to pump the oil out of it, and uh, basically I put a pump on this right here, took this hose out, put the, uh, removed this cap and pumped the oil out, actually drew it out, I guess you could say. Um, I have a, a pump that has a bit of suction to it, and pulled it out of the pan, and of course uh, refilled it all with uh, 1540 again. So a new filter, so I'm going to have to crank this thing over for a little bit, because I'm going to have to fill the filter up, right, and of course it's going to have to pressurize everything because the thing hasn't been running in a while. So. Um, so that'll be the first thing to do. So a nice big battery, brand new battery there. So I'll walk around the gen with you here. So as you can see on this side here, these are the controls. And this is what basically how you turn the thing on. So you press this and I believe it's this here and then this will preheat the glow plugs and it'll automatically start. So change the, uh, the filter on the bottom here, the Raycor filter. So that's all changed and I pre-filled it with diesel and change this diesel filter up on the top here as well. So it has two filters, one before the pump and one after. Keep everything nice and safe. And after that was done, I did prime it. Very easy to prime this thing. Basically, you just crack the nuts on the injectors here and um, press this little priming pump here and prime it. And that makes it pretty much ready to go. So what I'll do is I will attach the battery cables here. As you can see, I have some diesel waiting. I'll attach the battery cables here just basically press them on and uh, we'll take a look at the settings on the other side. I'll pull off the, uh, the solenoid here. So this is the fuel solenoid. So I'll remove that so that it doesn't start and uh, we'll crank it for a little bit and get some oil pressure first. And then I will open the door here and we'll see if it runs. That'll be good enough for now. That's nice and tight. Okay, so I'll disconnect this wire here. It just plugs in. Right, so that way this thing is not going to try to start in here if it does. So here we go, turn this on, DC controls. All right, and let's go over to right here. PSI, you want to see what we got going on here. So uh, we put it onto this and that should preheat it. Okay, hear that click. So now it'll crank. Let's see how quickly we get PSI. Keep my finger on this. Well, we got some PSI here. That's really bobbing around. 
All right, so it didn't take much. So we got pressure, it went up to 26 PSI. It looked like something near there. So within that cranking, now at least we know we have oil and we're pretty much ready to go. So I'll just shut this off for a moment here again and uh, I'll get the diesel containers attached up. So when I filled the Raycor filter at first, I filled the lines also with diesel and I plugged them so I can just pop the diesel lines into the uh, jerry cans and I should be ready to go. The return line, I, I also put a plug in to stop it from draining. Didn't really need to do that. I just didn't want it leaking all over the place. So uh, that's what the two jerry cans are for. So one jerry can is for fuel and the other one, so one is for fuel and the other one is for the return line. So I'll get this all hooked up here, get the garage open and uh, let's see if it runs. All right, let's see what it does. I have hearing protection on just in case it is very loud. I might be talking aloud because these are on. So I'll turn on the DC controls. The fuel solenoid is hooked back up. It's just initializing right now. Okay, so, and that would preheat the glow plugs. You may have heard that click. So let's see what happens. I think six of these 240 volt, 4800 watt portable heaters should be a great load for that generator. So I have five here and I have another one in another area. It's a different color than this. So I bought all the ones that I could find at the one place. They only had five in stock, so I'll use my old heater as well. So each of them are 4,800 watts. We'll say 4,500 watts to be safe. All right. So, so two of them would make 9K, so 9, 18, 27. So roughly 27,000 watts of continuous load on that generator. So that should make it work just a little bit. And we'll see how good the regulation is. So there we have it. These things are great. You know, it's a, it's a load in a box. We have two resistors on one side, nichrome resistors on one side, and a fan to air cool them on the other side. There we go. Perfect. So stay tuned. This will be coming up very soon. We'll build the load and apply it to the generator and see how the generator reacts to all of these heaters being attached at the same time. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. There'll be a lot of repairs and restorations and teardowns and all of that great stuff on this channel. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that and definitely tap that bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way, and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.